Hi, I'm Lenny McGill with Glock Store, and today we're going to talk about the reset trigger. Do you like to shoot fast? Do you like to shoot accurately? Do you want to be more confident and more aggressive with your trigger pull? Check this out. You can get the same exact speeds and accuracy that I just showed you by practicing with the reset trigger. The reset trigger allows you to pull the trigger multiple times without resetting or recycling the slide. Because of that, you get a lot of trigger time and you exercise the muscles, the special muscles in your finger and the dexterity to be able to, when you get out on the range, shoot really fast and really accurately because you're practicing with the reset trigger. Now if you couple that with the laser bullet, the magic bullet that we sell, you'll find that you can verify your accuracy. But you will still get a lot of practice and control out of the reset trigger by just working the trigger and working the presentation and making sure that you're keeping the sights still as you pull the trigger. Now the trigger set at about six, six and a half pounds. So it is a little bit more stout than the factory trigger, but that's by design because we want to exercise our finger. So when you go out on the range and you start to shoot, even if you're shooting with a factory trigger or a three and a half pound connector, you can really go fast because you've trained on a heavier trigger. Just like a, a batter uses a, a batting weight on the bat, when he goes to swing the real bat without the weight, he can swing it faster. So it's kind of the same principle. So the reset trigger really uh, makes a big difference. And, and in this segment, we're going to go ahead and show the installation procedure uh, for the reset trigger. This is my Glock 19 that I practice with uh, almost uh, daily. Uh, I, I team it up with the Magic Bullet, which allows me to pull the trigger and to, uh, every time I pull the trigger, to spit out a laser uh, beam that uh, allows me to verify my accuracy. Uh, you can see I've got a, a magwell on it. Uh, I've got the uh, Falcon grips on it to give me a nice tacky grip. Uh, I've got this one teamed up with the, uh, the True Glow uh, TFO tritium fiber optic sights, uh, which I like a lot because they glow in the dark, of course, but they also glow during the day because they gather all the available light. And uh, on the other side, I've got the extended uh, magazine uh, uh, release button, which I like. So that's kind of how I practice. Uh, and again, I pick this up and just, uh, you know, we'll do 100 shots in three or four minutes. And, you know, it really does translate itself out to the range. The accuracy, the skills you develop, uh, the speed you develop does translate itself out to the range. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the installation procedure. So uh, when you get yours at home, you'll know how to use it. Uh, it comes in a package, of course, and you get three major or, say, three individual components uh, that will make up this kit. Uh, first is our uh, modified uh, trigger and trigger housing, okay? Uh, this is a drop-in part. You just replace the original factory part with this part. And we've got it all set up. All you got to do is drop it in. I'll show you how to do that very shortly here. So let me put this guy down here on the gray. Uh, next is the um, special striker that we've built and machined. And this is not a factory striker. This is a special striker. Uh, it cannot be used with live ammunition. It's, it's meant for the laser bullet only. The, uh, uh, the magic bullet that we uh, recommend you use because um, it, it verifies your accuracy. But uh, this is what uh, makes the striker go forward, this extended and elongated striker. And the last piece is very small. We put it in a little individual bag so you don't lose it. It is the rebound spring, okay? And this is very important. And so uh, these are the three components you get. That little spring right there helps this uh, striker rebound. Now, of course, there are, these are assemblies, these two guys right here, and there are parts within these. We don't recommend that you take them apart. Just leave it together the way it is, uh, and we're going to drop it into a, uh, a Glock 17 uh, right now. So, uh, first thing I want to say uh, as I open up the, this Glock 17 is that, you know, the reset trigger is a training device. It's designed to allow you to get a lot of trigger time without going to the range and spending money on ammunition. So, it will save you money on ammunition, it will also give you better practice time because you can concentrate on sight picture, on trigger pull, on speed and uh, accuracy without you know worrying about bullets or ammo or smoke or anything like that. It's really about just being able to get that gun out there and repeat, through repetition, being able to uh, uh, do it 
super fast and super, super accurately. So with that in mind, there's no live ammunition in this room and there's never live ammunition close to the reset trigger gun when it's installed at, on my gun, okay? I don't ever want to confuse the reset trigger with uh, the live gun or, or ever introduce live ammunition into the reset trigger. Uh, I open up the uh, a brand new Glock 17 box. First thing I want to do is make sure the gun is unloaded, okay? It's brand new from the factory, but all guns are loaded, right? So I'm going to go ahead and drop the magazine. Keep my finger in a safe direction off of the uh, trigger you can see up along the slide here. Drop the magazine out. Inspect the magazine is in fact empty. Uh, and then uh, turn the gun over and grab the slide and pull back. One thing about Glocks, as you know, uh, is that the trigger is in the non-cocked position. You see it's it's already back or in a fired position. Uh, what's interesting with the reset trigger is it's always in the, fire, in, in the uh, loaded or cocked position. It's uh, ready to be squeezed. So uh, when you pick up a Glock, typically you can say, well, it's not cocked. You know, it's, it has to be racked. But you know, we always want to assume these guns are always loaded. So just be aware of the fact that, uh, yes, the reset trigger is always in the fire or ready to fire position. Pull the slide back. Keep my finger off the trigger again, guns pointing in a safe direction, verify that there is no ammo inside, and squeeze the trigger in a safe direction. Now we know the gun's unloaded. Okay, so there's your Glock 17. We're going to work on this guy and install the uh, <coughs> reset trigger to show you how it works and how easy it really is to install. Now there is a process. You have to take the gun apart, just, you know, just like anything else. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, do that. We're going to do our first disassembly of the, of the uh, slide. Just pull back on the slide a little bit like so pull down on the slide lock or takedown lever, and then let the slide go and push it forward with my thumb and pull the slide off the top. Now there are two parts to this uh, uh, installation. Uh, one is the, uh, the trigger housing itself and the trigger, and we're going to do that first. So I'll put the slide over here like that. And um, <clears throat> so I've got to take this whole thing apart, so let's go ahead and grab my punch, which I uh, actually suggest you, you use. Uh, and uh, my hammer. So this is my, my hammer and punch set. As most of you know, if you've uh, followed uh, some of the videos we do, there are three pins in the, in the modern Glocks. And uh, we're going to take out the um, uh, locking block pin first. And that is the guy up on top here. So I'm going to take my punch and put it into the hole uh, with the steel side and just punch it straight through. Now what's nice about this uh, wood block is it's got a little channel to allow this thing to come out. And out it comes fairly simply. All right. And then we just got to pull this guy out. And there's your locking block pin. And I also like to store the pins inside the channel so I don't lose them. Next will be the trigger pin. That's the larger pin. Sometimes on new Glocks, these are a little tight. And so the trick is to uh, lift up the uh, slide release lever. Okay, right here. And to, to take some of the pressure off that spring or, or kind of move the, uh, uh, the spring around on that uh, pin so it's easy to punch out. So again, I'll use now the fatter punch. Get it centered up on this guy. And with the steel end, and that one came out fairly easily. And I will uh, not lie to you, I actually took this apart uh, yesterday, and that's why it came out uh, easy. Yesterday was a little, a little tougher, tougher the first time uh, I ever took it apart. Uh, but once you take them apart a couple of times, they, they get to be fairly simple. Okay, last thing we're going to do is take out the uh, trigger housing pin in the back here. And again, I'll go back to my small punch, line it up with a hole, and... This one comes out fairly easily. This is the plastic uh, pin of the three. That one's plastic. The other two are steel. So there it goes. So now all the pins are out. Uh, first thing I want to do is just grab my um, slide release lever and just pull it straight out. Okay, and I'll pop that guy over there. And then uh, typically what I'll do is uh, get in here and grab the locking block with uh, some kind of pry bar. It just makes it a little easier and just pry it straight up. So just get it, get it started. Then reach in there with your hands and um, oh, you got to get a little grip on that, get it up there, and then be able to pull it out. So that's the locking block. Now we're ready to go ahead and just pull the whole trigger housing out. And um, you can do that by just lifting up on the trigger. Just lift it straight up. And then you can grab the um, ejector right here and just pull up on the whole housing, and out it comes. So it lifts out just like that, and that's the factory trigger. Now we, of course, have a... Uh, uh, the same factory parts, we just modified them. So they look exactly alike. And now I'm just going to go ahead and drop the factory down there. And this is now the reset trigger. And we're going to drop it into the Glock. That's all we want to do. 
So, trigger goes down first, and then the housing. And the housing may be a little tight for you, but just push it down so it seats itself all the way down. Okay. And there it is, it's all the way in. Now you can see right now the trigger is going to reset itself already. So if I go ahead and just push down a little bit so I can get my clearance here, and uh, you can see this, this trigger is going to want to come back. So that's because we have our spring uh, set up. So, I mean, that's it basically. Now I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the gun. So I can take my locking block and drop it in. Okay. And uh, you always want to be cognizant of the holes. You can kind of look through there and, and, and you can see the light in the holes there. And, and of course, uh, I can put my hand back there and you'll see them better. So now I know that everything's basically lined up right. Even on the, uh, the trigger housing, you can see the, this pin back here. So, uh, let's see here. Next thing I want to do uh, right now. So I've got the locking block, and this is a very important step right here. Uh, I like to put the locking block pin in right now. Okay, um, and there's a reason for that because I want that, um, I want this little spring on the slide release lever to be underneath the locking block pin. Not on top, but underneath. So if I put the locking block pin in first, get it started, and uh, again, one of the nice things I like about this, uh, this little uh, punch that I have is I can just put it on top here and just kind of push it down sometimes and get it started and actually will just seat itself all the way through. And the other thing I like about this hammer is too is that once you get it kind of flushed up, you can go back in here with this uh, nylon part and just kind of tap it in there and get it all the way flushed down. Okay, so now I've got the uh, first pin in, which is the uh, locking block pin. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and place my slide release lever into the slot and line up the, the hole, this hole, with the hole in the trigger pin of the frame and get it set. And sometimes you have to hold on to it because now, remember, I've got the spring pressure because I've got that spring underneath that first pin. And so, then I'll go to my trigger pin, get it started up, and I can actually just usually tap it in from here. Once I get close to the frame, turn it over to the nylon, and voila, there it is. And sometimes I'll use a corner of the nylon to just kind of get a little piece on that pin there. And so that has the spring pressure I'm looking for, and now look here, we've basically got this thing installed, and you can see now the reset action, all right? The trigger is resetting itself. And there it is, basically, in that situation. Now, last thing I had to do is just put in the um, trigger housing pin. And I'll just tap that guy in from the side. Voila. Okay, so there's the frame. It's ready to accept the slide. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and uh, work on the slide real quick. Uh, one of the things, uh, like I said, we have is an extended... Um, striker and uh, we've assembled it with uh, a, a higher par power spring and it's captured the same way with the uh, spring cups and this is the uh, spacer sleeve but one of the things we want to uh, talk about is this little rebound spring so it's a tiny little spring as you can see and we created this to make sure that we get the rebound effect that we look at, we're looking for uh, on this striker so I'm going to drop this rebound string right into the spacer sleeve it's going to see itself you'll see you turn around this way and there's the spring right there. And that's all we're going to do is just drop it in so it's, it's sitting up and down. Okay? So let me put that off to the side now. And we'll go address our uh, slide. Basically what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and pull the slide cover plate off. So to do that, I want to release the, um, pull the slide up a little bit, or excuse me, the uh, striker up, so I can get access to the spacer sleeve inside there. And I'm going to go ahead and take a little punch and get inside and I'm going to depress the striker spring with the spacer sleeve so that I can take the pressure off of the slide cover plate. So I'm going to push that down and then come across here with my thumb and just push the slide cover plate off. And it's fairly simple. I mean, a lot of guys I see come into the shop or come into you know, the shows and they've got this thing all scratched up because they're not reducing or releasing the pressure off of uh, this spacer sleeve. So you've got to do that to get this thing off because you'll notice on the back side 
uh, there's a, a detent here that really captures this spacer sleeve. And so it sits in there and until you get the pressure off there, it, it's kind of hard to get off. I mean, you can't get it off. It will come off, but it's not pretty, all right? So we want to keep this thing as pretty as possible. So that's the secret. Okay, once you do that, now, I'll go ahead and take the barrel out too because I want to take the extractor out. <coughs> barrel on the... Um, uh, guide rod there. Now, once we do that, we want to go ahead and, and pull the existing striker out, the factory striker, and there it is. Okay, and I'm going to pull up on the um, the plunger here, extractor plunger, so that I can get the extractor and the safety, the trigger safety plunger out. So to get this extractor and the trigger safety plunger out, I need to depress this guy, this trigger safety plunger, with my finger, and now comes the extractor. And now I can go ahead then and take this safety plunger out. And it is really, uh, oh, there's two pieces here. There's the plunger and the plunger spring. And typically on the Glock <coughs> factory, this spring is captured inside of this guy. And there it is, comes out like that. So that spring would come out if I pull on it, but it's actually kind of pushed in there and caught in there. And we're just going to leave it there. Now, for the reset trigger, we don't use this safety. We leave it out. All right, that's one of the reasons we don't use live ammunition, of course. Uh, but also, uh, this interferes with the reset trigger option. So we leave this out. That's very important. So I'm gonna put that off the side. Now I can go ahead and put the um, extractor back in and just basically replace it like so and get it positioned. And then I can push this guy down a little bit so it's gonna capture that into this place. And now I'm going to go ahead and replace uh, our uh, reset trigger striker into the channel. And a couple things you're going to notice. One, it sits up a lot higher than um, the factory. And two, it, uh, the spring is a lot stouter, and that's by design. Okay, make sure your uh, rebound spring is oriented properly. So I'll just go ahead and give you a look at that again. Make sure it doesn't turn over on its side or anything like that. And now we're going to go ahead and replace the slide cover plate. This is basically a you know, pretty easy procedure, uh, but I'll demonstrate this again here. So kind of get it started with my thumb, and then I'm going to grab a little thicker uh, punch, and I'm going to come down here. I'm going to depress this. Now remember, this has a lot of spring pressure on it, okay? So make sure you, you get as much as you can. Come down and get that uh, slide, slide cover plate over top of the spacer sleeve. And then I'll take a smaller or thinner punch and get on top of this um, extra, uh, eject, extractor depressor plunger spring and uh, then squeeze that up. And there it goes, just like that. And that's it. Okay, so there's the assembly. Okay, so let's go ahead and now assemble the slide and we'll put it back on top of the uh, frame and, and make this guy work. I'm just going to drop the barrel straight in, okay, and drop in the uh, recoil guide rod assembly. And now I am ready to assemble the modified upper onto the modified lower. All right. All right, and there we go. Now you'll see the trigger is in the cocked position, and I'm going to squeeze it, and it goes back and back. There it is. So that's my reset trigger, and that's the installation. And you can see, just by working the trigger itself, you're going to be able to practice trigger control, sight picture, sight alignment, maintaining that as you squeeze the trigger, Dry firing is a whole different animal with this. You don't have to rack the slide anymore. You're up. I mean, and you can, you can really pay attention to that front sight. Make sure it's not jumping all over the place as you squeeze. So it's really just finger only. All right. What you don't want to see is this, the front sight yanking or twisting or turning. By practicing like this on a regular basis, you're going to increase your trigger finger speed, strength, stamina. I mean, this really makes a big difference. Now, if you team it together with the laser bullet, like I'm about to show you here, it becomes an awesome training tool that will 
make you a much better shooter. Absolutely. All right. If you don't see or don't know about the laser bullet, we've got another video on this, but uh, this is basically the laser bullet, laser uh, shot uh, module that you drop into your gun. It's a 9mm native. It does uh, have adapters for other ones, other calibers, 9, 40, and uh, 45. You just drop it in, okay? There is a safety pipe that you can use, which uh, is recommended so people know that you are practicing. Uh, so for the longer gun, I'm going to use this little adapter. Okay, and you get it set up like that. You notice here the washers, they go into the barrel of the gun, and then this is threaded right here, and it's going to actually marry itself up with a laser bullet. So you get in there, a couple turns, and that's all it needs. And then, every time you squeeze the trigger, watch my hand over here. And that goes as fast as you can pull the trigger. So now you can complete the whole safety apparatus by getting that guy on here like that. So now here is your laser trainer. This will fit in your holsters. You can pull it out. You can see a target on the wall. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. Or if you're so inclined, you can use the uh, little uh, targets that uh, come with the laser bullet and what's nice about these is they actually to your naked eye not to the television camera but to the uh, naked eye they actually will light up when you shoot them uh, uh, across the wall so across the room so you can actually see that you actually hit it and what's nice about these guys is they're, they're little tiny targets but what's truly amazing is when you set these up and you practice a little bit is you can hit them rapidly I mean it's just amazing you, if you practice you're up boom you can actually hit and and get as fast as you want to be and practice your first shot second shot third shot whatever you want to do you can put the targets all over the room and I'll show you that in another video but this has been the uh, installation of this device now there's only one other thing I want to show you that's really kind of just taking it apart so I'll take the uh, bullet out to take this guy off sometimes it's a little tricky because you need to have it in a fired position. And then you need to work the slide lock lever at the same time. So a lot of people find that hard. So what I'm gonna show you is this little trick here. And this will work for you if your gun is ever locked up and you can't get the slide off. Just go ahead and, uh, and pull the slide back and, and lock it back with the slide release lever. And then take your uh, punch again. And we're just gonna take the slide cover plate off. Same way we did before. Just by depressing that. And I'm gonna pull the extended uh, uh, striker that we uh, supplied to you out and then I'm going to go ahead and just uh, at this point I can just pull the slide cover plate right off just like this uh, pull the whole slide off because now the striker is not in the way and that's how you do the disassembly and then you can go ahead and put the gun back to its original uh, uh, state so that you can use it for your self-defense or your shooting in the range again I do want you to know no live ammunition should ever be used with a reset trigger. It is a training device. You can use it in a dry fire situation, but make sure there's no ammunition in the room. Make sure you don't use any ammunition in magazines. Use dumb ammunition or something else to simulate this ammunition, but no live ammo should ever be introduced into the reset trigger. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this presentation. I know that I use the, the reset trigger almost every day, and I know for a fact it has helped me become a better shooter, and I know it will help you too. Thanks for watching. I'm Lenny McGill with Glock Store.